really, 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 really short shorts. Really short shorts. And then there's a slit up the side of them too. Right. Because I can't have any wind slowing me down. They call me the Gray Ghost, which is also what they called Bill Cosby's. That's right, Doctor Huxtable. It is. No, well, now we have to cut that. <laughs> well, no, I think it's okay if we call him. If we call Doctor Huxtable, that's the character. Okay. Who who never did anything wrong? The the fictional Theory. character who I have divorced from the bad bad man yeah. who did terrible things. They got divorced on that show. No, in my mind, I've I oh, I see separated. Any connection. So you're okay with giving Bill Cosby money and attention as long as he's playing a character? No, I'm not really giving Bill Cosby money. I'm not still actively watching the Cosby show. I don't think that my mentioning... I don't think it's on... It's, a, Brian it's on. already bought the, the box set DVD. <laughs> right. And so the right. money's already been spent. The money's already gone to Cosby. How many times have we referenced Gordon Gartrell and had to have it Mark, cut it out of this because we're yeah. too sensitive about Cosby references. Yeah, it's true. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to say about any of all, of all that other than probably shouldn't have done that stuff. <laughs> well, that's no? some strong condemning language you've got there. You shouldn't that's have well. done that stuff. And by that stuff, I mean saying the word asshole and you know, himself. Remember in, in the movie in the, the stand-up doc himself he says asshole on stage oh the joke I mean, was the joke was uh people say that cocaine brings the the real you out yeah but what if you're an asshole and i remember even thinking back then like whoa what are you dang bill cosby right. if you can <laughs> if you can do that what else are you capable of and it turns out <laughs> worse what? things than i thought Right. Yeah, right. We should probably cut all this, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I, don't, I don't think we should have a running Bill Cosby commentary this week. Probably not. Really? <laughs> I, I think that we have we have glorified. We're not glorifying this, right? Mm -hmm. We we're I think we're condemning the actions of yeah. Okay, we'll start over right now. Okay. I want okay. really, 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 really short shorts. So who wears cool. really, 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 really short shorts? He, I can't do this. The gray ghost. I mean, I... <laughs> and we gotta What's start happening? over. That's oh, yeah, start God over. damn it, Brian! God damn it, God. Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important. Weird news from across the globe with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Weeby, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Solid Gold was a variety TV show uh, in the late 1970s, early 1980s. I don't think we we wouldn't remember it if it didn't happen. Yeah, I remember. I remember everything from the moment of birth for me. Oh, no, gross! Yeah. That's, it's sorry. it's going to be traumatic. No, you just kind of. Now, how are you defining birth? The first time I got on stage. <laughs> The solid gold ran from 1980 to 1988. <laughs> I was cast as little little baby Johnson in uh, in an early early episode of The Waltons. You were cast. You, you were the baby who had it. And I did all my own stunts. I fell down a well. <laughs> did that happen to the Waltons? Did anybody yeah. ever fall down a well in the Waltons? Sounds really? like something that would happen to the Waltons, but and a snake almost bit me. Oh, that's a trying day for little baby Johnson. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, and then when TV Guide came out, uh -huh. guess what? Mm -hmm. it said jeers to them putting too many breasts on TV with the network battle of the stars. Cheers, the portrayal of little baby Johnson 
<laughs> you want to give our TV. listeners an update on what TV Guide is and what Cheers and Jeers are? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, so back in the day, <laughs> if we're doing that. Let's do it. TV Guide magazine, which was a magazine that was sold in supermarkets that had all the like a little digest, they, little or... digest. But they yeah. would have articles about you know different TV shows and stars and stuff like that. But there was always this. There was the Cheers and Jeers section, which would they would champion mm-hmm. a thing that was happening on TV and. And then condemn another thing that they did not like that was happening <laughs> on TV. Right. It's like a less acerbic Mickey Rooney. Yes, in many mm. ways. Because he never had any cheers, just jeers. You think he was mostly jeering? Yeah. Mark well, Ryan is observations. Oh, oh shit. What's up? Oh my god. We Mark haven't even Ryan. introduced ourselves yet. That's threatening Mark Ryan. Sorry, right. Mark. Yeah, we have yeah. not introduced ourselves yet. How am I threatening? You look when you were wearing <laughs> a black shirt, you loom. And it's frightening <laughs> to everyone here. We've talked about yeah, if it. We, if we subtitled this episode, it would just say Mark Ryan looms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm glad. I, I think that's the thing I'm going for. So the sneering visage of Mark Ryan enters the screen. <laughs> well, that wraps up another week of the International yeah, News we Service. Sure did it. How we are for people who talked about being more focused or at least talked around being more focused. We are a yeah, focused. No, no I, I'm good. I'm, I'm yeah. there. I'm there. All right. Here we go! We're doing it! You guys ready to get started? I'm ready to fuck this news up. Fuck yeah! I sure am. Would somebody give us a countdown so I know when to start taking this seriously? Three, two, one, go. Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison along with... I am Brian Camp. I'm Mike Weeby. And down to the lower thirds, we have our producer, editor, station manager... Caterer. Mark Ryan. (laughs) Musician. Hey, everybody. That was an efficient. Hey, everybody! That was a very quick. Clip. Yeah, that's we're, hey, we're, everybody. we're like we're. This is exciting. We got a bunch of new changes mm-hmm. that are happening on the show. Uh, there's uh, segments coming in. Uh, yep. A lot of big corporate stuff. We're getting bought out by Rupert Murdoch, and we are going to have to up our game if we're going to make it in the you know this upper echelon news. This uh, podcast is now being broadcast. Uh, not only internationally, but all the way to the space stations. So oh, we got a, we got a story about that actually. Well, I, isn't that funny that I knew that before I knew that? That's maybe <laughs> some of the professionalism that I'm bringing to this job now, as opposed to before <laughs> right. when I was simply meandering my way into traffic. Well, that's why they call it the news, Mike. I have not listened. Normally, I start these podcasts about. Oh, a fifth of vodka and uh, and a and a key bump of fucking clown powder, and uh, <laughs> I'm sober as a judge. You know what my wife said the other day? She was trying to uh, she was trying to say uh, sober as a judge, but she conflated sober as a judge, quiet as a church mouse, and crazy as a shit house rat, and said sober as a shit house mouse is what it was. Oh, yeah, shit goes, house mouse. Sober as a shithouse mouse. My mouse has seen things. <laughs> it's trying to get past it in a healthy yeah. way. In yeah, a productive, exactly. healthy way. Probably in group therapy. That, that yeah, mouse. I mean, if you find yourself covered in feeky, then at some point, you're like, you know, I hit rock bottom. This is rock yeah. bottom. Right. Well, we've already lost track of our... We've already slipped off the efficiency wagon. We've well, already failed our it. listeners and our newfound steering towards we got a new format coming next week and well, uh, we're working on it this week even right it's this ha- yeah this is we're this working is part of it we're time. preparing right. I'm, yeah. I'm bringing in a segment this week mm-hmm. Ooh. yeah i was out in the right. fucking i was out on i was out on these streets the beat the the dark streets of austin doing research mm-hmm. the research beat the research yeah i had an intern mm-hmm. who i screamed out a number of times <laughs> Crag, <laughs> well, it's Crag. It was Crag. Yeah, yeah. He didn't really listen cracking to anyway. open the Encyclopedia Britannica. A lot of people have been asking. A lot of people have been asking us to let Crag on the air, and the answer is resounding no. If you Uh-oh. heard this mumble mouthed dimwit speak, you would you would never want to listen to a podcast of any sort ever again. So our first story was submitted by Harry. I don't know if his last name is Gerwitz or Gervitz. Because, you know, the V can go either way. But uh, I also believe he's on our Patreon. Of, of what what 
what nation does he hail from? Maybe that will help us uh, decipher the, how to pronounce the his United name. States. The, the United USA States of is that of America. Where, okay. The same, do we know the which same, one? We do, but I don't want to. I don't know that he wants that information out there. So I'm not really. Yeah, I know it's right, shocking. It must be a small one, so it must be Rhode Island. He's from Rhode Island, probably. Yeah, uh, it's a good, good guess. Vermont, mm-hmm. Vermont, Verm- oh man, Vermont. Nothing good comes out of Vermont, does it? Oh, they got that syrup. Yeah, but remember, we established <laughs> that Cairo is just as good as that syrup. No, that's that you claimed it was, but we didn't. No, didn't, no, we didn't I do just any don't. Tests. You guys are back falling in like episode for like twenty six, something like that. Right, right, and it's and we never we never came back around to it. Like you guys promised we would. It's just. It's it's thickened sugar water. I'm waiting for our Canadian listeners to send to send Brian some 100 percent pure maple syrup, so we can first mm-hmm. taste test it, and second, rub his mm-hmm. goddamn well, face in it for being wrong. Yeah, because I've never had sugar before. I'll be so surprised. Anyway, so Harry Gerwitz or Gerwitz sent us a story from the Daily Mail. A Japanese man identified only as Toko recently made headlines after he spent 2 million yen or nearly $16,000 on a realistic border collie costume. He hired a Japanese company known for creating sculptures and models for movies and commercials, and it took them 40 days because the man kept rejecting and revising the costume to get it right. 40 days. Yeah. That's that's, that's biblical. That's that's the same amount of time that it took our Lord and Savior, to get back to Moses. Mm-hmm. I think that was, was Noah, wasn't mm-hmm. it? That... Him too. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, and since Mike paused the story, yes. uh, Lassie no, there, there was a th- I was, was not going to ma- bring that up, but then a thing happened, and then there, there was a distraction. <laughs> so, sidebar, professional sidebar. sidebar. Professional this is gonna get cut out because the listener has no context for what we're talking about. Well, we're Look, trying. Guys. Listen, we're trying to make the stories a little more streamlined and efficient. Uh, True. Mm-hmm. Right now, we're doing a professional thing called a side break, ba, 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 breaking news in regards to right. this sidebar. Continue, Brian. Oh, you said continue, Brian. Well, uh, I just want to make sure the listener knew that I thought maybe they might have heard border collie and wouldn't have had a reference for what that is. It's a dog. <laughs> Just like Lassie. Well, Go good ahead, job. Kevin. Excellent. What if they don't know what Lassie is? S- sidebar, sidebar over. Sidebar over. Okay. Okay. So Toko said in an, in an interview, and I want to point out Toko is not a native English speaker. So I'm reading what he said because I don't have a recording of it, but I'm not making fun of him. It's just he's not, you know, he doesn't speak English. You native. better not pull some Mickey Rooney shit here. Yeah, absolutely not. So he said, quote, my favorite is quadrupedal animals, especially cute ones. Among them, I thought that a big animal close to me would be good, considering that it would be a realistic model, so I decided to make it a dog. I met such a condition and made Kali my favorite breed of dog. Toko okay. celebrated his completed Border Collie costume by posting a video of himself in his costume where he can be seen waving his paw and rolling around on the floor like a happy Border Collie. And I'll tell you this, Mm. he does look, if you saw a picture, you can look up Toko Border Collie. It does look like you're looking at a dog. It's very strange. Okay. Did they hollow out a real dog for this? Yeah. (laughs) Well, it it did not specify. Because that's what they did for Lassie. (laughs) Yeah. Plus, he wasn't a real dog. That was a human. Right. In, a, in, a, in a dog costume. In a, well, not a dog costume. I mean, costume in the sense it was a murdered dog that they hollowed right. out. <laughs> the inspiration for what? the clumps, the nutty professor, was that Timmy played himself and the dog in Lassie. Well, what about when there was a scene between Timmy and Lassie? All mirrors. Uh, listeners, <laughs> I'm going to... That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, listeners, I am going to suggest you do look up Toko Border Collie because it is it's it's fairly creepy. I mean, but it is it's uh maybe I'll I'll, I'll post this on social media with the yeah, picture at the top. But so still, if you want to like, see spell, Toko, spell Toko T O K O. I mean, it's a very good costume, but does this story get sinister? Like, does he start going and smelling people's crotches and stuff, or is he just kind of? I mean. 
what does he do? Like, what does he, you know, like, is he, is he do, cause this, I mean, it's a lot of money, but is he doing it to go perform somewhere or is he doing it to go uh, shit in public and try and get away with it because it gets him, yeah. gets him off. <laughs> is it hooked up to his parts? My understanding is it's, he's doing, well, I don't know that he read rockets. Does he paint his dick red and then go and <laughs> <laughs> go and lie on his back and just what what what's happening? I don't know. Right. Oh, right. rough, rough. I don't know. <laughs> oh, if he looked, oh, no. if he looked like a hyper realistic dog and his reaction was just rough, rough, it would be. Rough, be rough. Good, I don't know. Good, yeah, rough, rough. I'm watching him move around in it, and I don't. It's weird. It looks more like an animatronic dog. Yeah, he doesn't quite seem to have the moves down yet. It's hard to believe that it's a human. It's more animatronic feeling. Is there anything for scale in the picture? Like, is this a big human inside of a once living dog, or is it yeah, a? I mean, it's like a normal sized Japanese man. Okay. So he's like comparable to a big. Can, collie. There can be big fat guys. There can be little skinny guys. Yeah. There can be tall yeah. guys. I mean, there's not a mean average i don't think they all like armor hot dogs <laughs> what Come, don't you know this fat kid skinny kid it's good, it's good. oh okay nothing yeah, in yeah, that yeah, song yeah, about yeah. dogs though dogs but honestly the dogs probably it's do about like hot, dogs. hot dogs of course it's about dogs, dogs like hot dogs yeah. they're not yeah. they're not uh, discerning yeah. okay. animals when it comes it's to fair. food for the most part and you guys probably don't know this but there's not real dogs and hot dogs so it's not even a cannibal thing yeah, Actually, it's just meat. dogs eat meat. We got a we got a story about hot dogs later. So we find out what is inside mm -hmm. Brian's favorite mm -hmm. food. Again, professionalism reigns mm -hmm. supreme tonight. You see how we're forecasting future stories, listener? That's a professional news. Foreshadowing, I believe you mean. Oh, foreshadowing. Yeah. What did I say? Forecasting. Forecasting. Same forecasting. Thing. That's yeah, what you but, do with the weather. How would you correct me on that? <laughs> I'm being I'm I'm being a little artful in my speech. I'm trying to bring a little you know, a news culture to this. To work together with each other a news team supposed to be a team and the listener will notice that mike has a new segment but my my desire to bring in the weather mm -hmm. was resoundingly voted down the so. international weather yes <laughs> people want to know <laughs> what's it going to be like in malta tomorrow <laughs> well they won't know now i guess just go on vacation and risk it right Dude, right malta's supposed to be nice huh? i'm not going because i don't know I don't know, right? I canceled. I canceled my trip to Tierra del Fuego. Yeah, I I didn't. I was gonna go see the Del Fuegos there. <laughs> Man, the Violent Femmes before they had a record deal. Before they went gold. So our next story comes to us from Vice. Ah, which one? Uh, Gin, the card game. Mm -hmm. Can you bet on that? I mean, you can bet on any yeah. anything with a winner and a loser. So I'm, I'm betting against Mike. Can oh. That's, oh, you know what? Yeah, that's rude. Mike, See, that's... I'm always betting for you. Yeah. I'm always betting on you. You're going to make it. <laughs> and always. I hope so. Mm hmm. So if Hollywood. Professionals are positive. Mm -hmm. I didn't interrupt. You hadn't started yet. So that's the alpha hell. main man mindset. That's Professionals are man. positive. P PRP. Mm -hmm. ABP. Always be positive. I don't. I don't know. That's Always the best way to say that. Be positive. It if, works to remember your type as well. Yeah, your Go blood ahead. type as well. Mm. If Hollywood has taught us anything, it's that we are one UFO away from a massive war with malicious aliens. Now, this may be one step closer to a reality. According to a PhD student at the University of Vigo in Spain, there are actually four quote malicious extraterrestrial civilizations unquote in the milky way to determine this the writer researched how many invasions between countries have occurred on earth over the last 50 years he then applied this to the number of known and estimated habitable planets and to seti's estimate that there are 15,785 civilizations in the milky way however the author ultimately determined that the odds of an Earth invasion by malicious aliens are very low. First of all, the odds that one of these four malicious civilizations would receive a radio transmission that would lead them to Earth is unlikely. Next, 
one of these malicious civilizations would have to have developed technology capable of interstellar travel. And as civilizations become more advanced, they tend to be less warlike. The odds of a planet killing asteroid hitting the earth are about one in 100 million years. By contrast, the researcher determined the odds of a malicious extraterrestrial civilization attacking the earth are closer to one in 10 billion years. Uh, and just for reference, the earth is about four and a half billion years old. The re- uh, <laughs> how, how, old I mean, you, how old do you guys think it is? What? 3000 now? Yeah, I think between three, three and thirty five hundred. I think that's. Yeah. It's, uh, that's uh, there's a that's there's a correct. book. Uh, uh, to... the, the first book right. of science is called the Bible. You can and it's, you can figure it out. Yeah, it's just math. The, it's just math, yeah. right? And also, how do you know these malicious society? I mean, how do they know that these places taste so good? <laughs> that's that's delicious. You're thinking of delicious. Huh? The word you're thinking of is delicious. I know, but malicious is like even more delicious. It's like, <laughs> it tastes so good. It's so mm, delicious that, was... that it's malicious. Mmm, this is malicious. <laughs> oh, this is malicious I pizza. I don't, I don't think you know how to use Ooh, that word. Oh, this is malicious. It's not what that word means at all. Well, agree to <laughs> disagree. The researcher... You sound like a, an angry southern mechanic. Oh, this is malicious. <laughs> <laughs> what is an angry southern mechanic eating there that it's, it's so malicious I don't know, probably pork rinds I'll give pork rinds a malicious this caramel apple is malicious <laughs> <laughs> oh, half your teeth are rotten out of your head could I get extra caramel on it the researcher admitted his calculations are very speculative, but he said he hopes he can start a conversation about whether it's actually risky to send messages into space. Uh, there's a lot yeah. going on here. Yeah, well, let's hey, just break well, it down for us. Well, well, good for him for admitting how speculative this is. Almost to the point of being completely useless <laughs> and entirely meaningless. Yeah. Almost. Good for him. Good for him for admitting that he wasted his own time, and he's wasted your time, Kevin. And, and now, now we've ours. wasted the time of the good listener, the mm-hmm. INS. So you're saying we're wasting the listener's time? No. This guy <laughs> is. This we're guy reporting is. his time wasting. We're exactly. letting people know that this is... this is. Ye- How many times do we have to talk about the science group? <laughs> and, well, by the way, we are, we are a, a, a race of people that talk about space as a source of more resources. I think there's a really good chance that if there's four malicious species uh-huh. in, in our solar system or in our galaxy, uh-huh. we are one of them. Well, okay, that's fair. We're the one most likely to wipe out the Earth anyway. Why are we assuming that they're malicious and that they are not? In fact, now I understand I got the word wrong. They are <laughs> the antonym of malicious. Why are we not assuming that they are delicious? I know that malicious <laughs> tastes bad. I you know, I got confused. Right. Ugh, gross. Ugh, yeah. This is malicious. They could be delicious. Yeah, they could be. But they could be delicious. They could be like, ah, oh, hey, listen, man, we're all we're all popcorn and light and happiness. <laughs> let, let me hug you. We sleep right. on titties. The alien planet's huh. starting to sound okay. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm saying that's like a good like how do we not know that they don't want to help the earth? Like giving us titty mattresses? Did you say earth? <laughs> I said it the way Will Smith says it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they could be. I mean, so, you know, according to this, there are 15,781 peaceful civilizations and four malicious civilizations. There, there aren't any. There's one and it's us. That's it. How do they figure this? It's psychic like transmissions. What, how, how, how does he figure well, he used SETI's data. You know, SETI is the search for... But how do they, yeah, but SETI does not know how many civilizations right. exist. And they certainly don't know what the, the civilization's demeanors are. Ah, oh, the Klingons and the Ferengi are <laughs> quite <laughs> malicious. But when you're uh, dealing with a Baratheon and a... Is it Baratheon from Game of Thrones? And Darth Vader's, they are <laughs> much more kind if you get them in the early years. You know, Mike, don't ever, don't ever get into a trade war with a Ferengi. Oh, boy. Huh? <laughs> don't, yeah. ever, don't ever try to haggle over a price with a Ferengi, right, Kevin? That's right. 
So our next story mm. comes to us from the BBC. You're talking. You're talking to a Gorn about a. <laughs> <laughs> Before we leave this story, yeah, like right, I, right. I, I, I am interested in SETI. I think it's very interesting. I like, I like the fact that we uh, actually. What is SETI? Can you can you uh, the describe search it for, for extraterrestrial intelligence? There's a giant, Excellent. big as fuck satellite. I don't know where it is. Brazil or something like that. I think it's a. I think it's a radio telescope. Is what it is. Radio telescope. Yeah, yeah. and they're out there. And I don't. And I think that it does something other than than look for extraterrestrial life. But uh, maybe it is just looking for that. It's scanning for like anomalies. <laughs> uh, Tachyon like, particles. They're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Scanning for space in no, but it's scanning for like weirdo like radio waves and stuff that might identify that and I, I don't know maybe it also like can map stars or something like that it seems kind of crazy that anybody would put enough money to like to do that but i don't know i agree said he's a wonderful thing yeah but i don't i don't think that whoever this guy is saying like there's seven thousand good civilizations and two bad ones right no we don't know that there's any we literally do not know <laughs> that there's any civilizations period we don't know that there's any life anywhere Mm-mm. If there if there was life, what do you think it would look like? Well, I mean, I I do think that there is somewhere, and I probably looks like green skin, purple dicks, green skin, purple dicks. Now that was two weeks ago. Oh. It's got to be new life. I know. I mean, I I got a lot of octopuses on my brain lately, okay. so I'm thinking oh. very octopusial. Um, okay, but you know, I don't know. It could be anything. They could exist just as thought waves. <laughs> oh, sound particles. Sure, maybe maybe something to do with a quasar. Maybe a quasar. I don't. I I don't know, but I don't think that. I don't. I don't think we're at a place that we can determine malicious versus non-malicious or delicious, if you will. I, I think SETI's problem, if I may, Mike, yeah. and I think it's the problem that a lot of and, and and maybe there's there's probably a name for it in in interesting science circles is that if you don't give people some indication that there's something that they can immediately relate to and will identify as cool, then they won't support the yeah. the ongoing development of the thing you are studying, right? I mean, people yeah. quit caring about NASA when we stopped going to the moon, but uh, NASA's yeah. been doing cool shit for every, on yeah, They're constantly doing cool stuff. And I'm sure SETI does, like Mike says, a lot of great things, but if they don't publish some mumbo jumbo nonsense about how many civilized planets there are and people can say oh yeah that's just like babylon 5 then people won't support <laughs> yeah. steady and the work the good work hey, they it's do true. babylon 5 makes space a lot you, more boring the, you, the people <laughs> they want to see ass and they want to see titties and <laughs> and they got to make mm-hmm. all this stuff sexy like oh shit there's fucking you ever heard of fucking water world well that's on another planet Ooh. what do you think about that so that's, our next story that's comes to us from the BBC. Ah, Bad Boys Club. Bad Boys Club. In late May, 1,369 people gathered at Whitby Abbey in North Yorkshire, England, to set a new world record. The new record was for the largest gathering of people dressed as vampires. The event was organized to mark the 125th anniversary of Bram Stoker's novel Dracula, which was first published in 1897. Mm. The gathering was set at Whitby Abbey because the Abbey inspired Dracula's London home in the novel, or at least it's the home he's buying. A representative from the Guinness World Records said, quote, we are quite strict about the official costume that is allowed. It must include black shoes, black trousers or dress, waistcoat, shirt, black cape or collared overcoat, and fangs on t- on the top set of teeth. Uh, this was not the first world record for a gathering of vampires either. The previous record was set at Doswell, Virginia in 2011 with 1,039 dorks. Uh, wait, hold on. I mean vampires in attendance. Don't, I don't I didn't appreciate that at all. You you weren't there. Were you? Wait, were you? What? Are, are you wearing a cloak? I'm not wearing my cloak right now. But I think you're mal- maligning some very enthusiastic costumed players. Is they're gonna come after me? No, they're they're not all vampire. Why? So this was the most 
vampires. The most people dressed as vampires. And not the most people Ooh. dressed as Draculas. Yeah, because they, they're you know you can't be. I mean, there you can be Dracula's wife. You, there's not really a girl Dracula. So real vampires don't count. Vampirella. Well, it's during, it was in in the light. Elvira. So she's a girl Dracula. Why would they do it in the light? <laughs> so you can count the vampires. That that no. made it. No, just, this is that made it is, stupid. This is That's stupid. Dumb. This is the dumbest <laughs> right. thing. If they did this in the light, I I. Everything about this is dumb. This is what? everything about this is dumb. Oh, they're all day walkers. We're supposed to think yeah. they're all day walkers. Okay, yeah. Oh, like Blade. Yeah, like Blade. Yeah, like Blade. Blade's not a vampire. He's a half and he's a half vampire. Yeah. But he also, I don't know that he fits the costume requirements. He wears black trousers. He's got things. Does he even have like a purple shirt or something? I mean, I don't think he has a cloak. I, I guess that's an issue. Yeah, he has lots of cool shirts. He has lots of cool shirts, though. Cool, cool uh, boots too. Cool glasses. What does Whistler? Whistler does too. I'm just not happy about this story. Like, I don't, I don't think that. Hey, what, I don't think that you. I don't. I. I think they have to renounce that record. If they did this in the daytime, okay. this record is. I contest. Where do you formally contest hmm. a Guinness Book of World Records at? Right with the Guinness Book people. Probably the brewery, right? Yeah. Get out of the brewery. I will threaten to stop drinking their black frothy beverage. If enough people write letters, that's how Cagney and Lacey stayed on the air. Yep. <laughs> uh, remind, remind people what Cagney and Lacey was. I don't. Cagney and Lacey was a hit show in, I believe, the mid, early to mid to late mid 80s about uh, Tyne Daly. Late mid. Who played either Cagney or Lacey in another. <laughs> Popular female actress who played Suzanne the other... Suzanne Plachette played, played James Cagney. James, <laughs> what? Sharon, I believe Sharon Gless. I don't think any of that's true. Sharon Glass played James Cagney. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of... Yeah, she, hey, yeah, she, she, yeah she. You dirty rat. Why you dirty rat? Top of the you world, ma. Top of the world. Mm-hmm. That's where all that comes from. <laughs> that's why people are so passionate and wrote the letters. Wow. Like, don't take that's this a... brilliant... Classic pizza, classic Hollywood off TV. Mm-hmm. Tyne Daly also in Magnum Force. I think we talked about that some at some point. Magnum Force being a Dirty Herald movie. Mm-hmm. Very good one. <laughs> if you're looking to round out your Clint Eastwood night, Magnum Force is good. Did you say this happened in Yorkshire? North Yorkshire. Home of the Terriers. <laughs> so what? Uh, how would you have staged your uh, gathering of the vampires to do it properly? Since you're bothered by this gathering of dorks, I mean vampires. Unbuttoned rayon shirts. All right. Nighttime. Nighttime. That's the main. I mean, that's the main oh, thing. Yeah. Nighttime. nighttime. Uh-huh. Scarf. What about an ascot? Scarf or ascot? Definitely neckwear. There's just there's got to be baroque neckwear. Okay. You're covering some sort of scar, right? Isn't that part yeah. of it? Yeah. And then there's and you don't there's, people to see. There's got to be some sort of a you know you could do like a clasp, like a high collar with like a big you know, kind of claspy uh, or like a big, uh, you know, medallion-y kind of thingamajig. What about powder on the face? Like, what about a pale, like, like you have to have done something to make yourself look bloodless. Is that yes. too much? Or do you think that's the right amount? Uh, I think that would be good. I think if you're going for a grand book of world record, also, you need to have slept either in Fiki or with a dead body with a corpse of some, and it can be like dead animals, but you sleep with them because you need to have the stench of death upon you. Is that a vampire thing? Yes. You have to, or you could constantly be gas passing because <laughs> <laughs> vampires can turn into mist. Oh, okay. And they, they stink. <laughs> they stink of sulfur. All right. Oh, yeah. Remember that next time you're concerned there might be a vampire in your home. Now, can you, could you photograph the vamp, like, by photographing the gathering of the vampires, if if people are like appear on the film that you photographed, d- does it disqualify? No, they them? can appear on film. You just can't appear in mirror. Yeah, when well, real vampires aren't allowed, it's people dressed like vampires. People dressed. That's the other thing too. So yeah. you you count the people in the photograph, and if uh, that's how somebody you, who was that's there, how you make yeah. sure. Yeah, I think vamp. I think real vampires can appear in photographs. Can they? Let's find out. Let's find. Let me. Let me. Let me. The way a camera works, though, is it's got a mirror. Let me talk to my occult source yeah. here. Where do you set the? It's F-stop? got a mirror that the that the light reflects off before it hits the film. 
Uh, well, that would be an analog yeah. camera, but a digital camera might work, yeah, right? Maybe. Hmm. So what, what did the internet say about, about whether vampires can I be wasn't filmed? looking at the internet. I was opening oh, okay. up Tobin's spirit guide. <laughs> and it's referencing another novel I don't have, so... Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Our last story oh. is dedicated to Brian. Oh, well, I feel it must be about yeah, nice. a, just a, a real good person who wants nothing but the best for his friends and, and wants everything to turn out good for everybody. That's how I often am described. I'm often described that way as a good as a good person. We'll just have to see how it how it plays okay. out. We'll have to see how the the story f- comes from the uh, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Mm, the Trib Rev. There's not a not a newspaper name that rolls off the tongue. Well, it's because they're serious about the news. As we have discussed on the show, Brian loves hot dogs. Hot dogs are his favorite food, and he will choose them over any other meal. And that's why I hate to break the news to him, but in late May, sorry, Brian, Mm. a Pennsylvania state trooper was dispatched to an accident on I-70 in Rostaver, Pennsylvania, where he reported that the, quote, violent stopping motion, unquote, of a semi-truck caused 15,000 pounds or Uh. 6,800 kilograms of the hot dog filler it was carrying in its trailer to catapult onto the roadway and explode out of its packaging on impact. For the uh, for those who do who may not know, hot dog filling is typically made from half pulverized beef, pork, or chicken mixed with fats and preservatives, and Brian says they're the best, tastiest part of the hot dog. Mm-hmm. Well, as my, my old man would say, peckers and lips. That's what goes on a hot Pulver, dog. Half pulverized peckers half and lips. Pulverized peckers and lips. Floor sweepings from the slaughterhouse. Uh, so this was just the filler. It wasn't hot dogs. It was just it was uncased hot dog. Is what you're saying? Like a a pat, almost a pate. Like big packages of just slurry. Hot dog <laughs> slurry. Oh man, I bet that smelled so good. Mm. <laughs> where where did this happen again? This was uh, ab- about like 30 miles outside of Pittsburgh. So it's probably get pretty hot there. Oh, this time of year, it's super oh, yeah. humid. Yeah. It's probably steamed hot dog filling. Circling that instantly. So the fire department reported that it was forced to close all but one lane of the roadway, bringing mm-hmm. traffic to a standstill for about five hours. Yeah. A police investigation revealed. The truck had been going so fast, quote, that multiple brakes on the vehicle were completely inoperable, resulting in a total loss of stopping power. Police have said the truck driver will face multiple charges from the accident, including speeding and presumably for ruining thousands of perfectly good hot dogs. So he made this joke, but I saw the photo of this and... uh it really looked like uh, at the end of Akira when Tetsuo starts to turn into a giant fucking amorphous, disgusting fucking monster. It was all pink and like pink and fleshy and it was super, super gross. Well, um, I might have to reevaluate my villain assignment from that movie. Ryan's going to get hungry the next time he watches that movie on his uh, weekly viewing. Man, I haven't had a good hot dog in a while. I had a a corn dog the other day. What about a Vienna sausage? No, no, no. Oh, not corn either. dog. Tell us about the corn dog. A lot of case. What? Well, you know what? I had had a brat recently, and I had a corn dog mm. more recently. Than that. And the corn dog, to the list to the non hot dog eating listener, perhaps mm-hmm. in one of our uh, the many countries we cater the news to, hot dogs are pre cooked <laughs> here in the states. So you can eat a cold hot dog, and it's it's just a cold hot dog. There's, you're not eating raw meat, so uh, but you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to, but but that 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 little extra bit of safety will some cause will cause some hot dog vendors, and it turns out corn dog vendors to be a little lax on the heating process. So while the batter was warm on the corn dog, the interior, the hot dog itself, was a little chilly, and that was an unwelcome surprise. Mm. Still ate it, but it wasn't it wasn't as good as I I had hoped because I do love a good corn dog. How do you feel about people that call corn dogs corny dogs? Hmm. Well, they're pieces of shit. <laughs> I thought that was the Texas way was to call it a corny dog. No, that's 
that's how you know someone's just a fool. I don't know how else to say it. That's, Sometimes they call them <laughs> conies. No, I think conies are just long hot dogs, right? Like you get a cheese coney at no, no, I think Sonic. It, I thought a coney had to have. I thought a coney was a hot dog with like a, like a meat sauce on it because it was coney sauce. Coney's also a term for a rabbit. If you're gonna eat rabbit, true. Sorry, Kevin. Yeah, I you know I, you know here's what struck me about that story that kind of pisses me the fuck off. <laughs> Good. Uh, is that they got the like, traffic down to one lane, but they said it was standstill for five hours. And that means it's because uh-huh. so many goddamn people had to fucking gawk with their slack-jawed mm-hmm. mouths open at a bunch of right. hot dog slurry there. And just Coulda. look at it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop and look at it longer. Oh, Coulda my God. <laughs> look at it. Well, you probably oh, want to roll down God. the window and get people are honking. Get some of that hot dog scent oh, in your car. Smell it! Oh my gosh, it's so gross! <laughs> I'm just gonna keep looking at it. They're honking at me to go, but I just need another couple good minutes of staring at it. And meanwhile, I'm back. I'm fucking late for a CrossFit competition or whatever, and I'm fuming. You were in Pittsburgh last no, week. No, I wasn't. But it, it, that it's that sort of scenario. Uh-huh. That would happen here. Uh-huh. That would, you know, make me late for a, a you know, a kickboxing tournament or a, you know, uh-huh. a jet ski exhibition that I was performing in. All because people just can't, you know, imagine that. Oh, there's an accident on the side of the road. Whether it's whether it's a, a whether it's a broken tail light that a cop pulled someone over for, or mm-hmm. you know. J- fucking Akira guy coming apart at the seams because <laughs> he had too much fucking psychic powers that are driving that t- Tetsuo. Whoever. <laughs> stop. I would need to get somewhere. I don't stop slowing me down because you don't ever get to see anything cool and you're excited to look at an accident. When I get up to an if I'm if I listen, if I've been in line and for a while and I get up uh-huh. to an accident. And there isn't something incredibly impressive. What, what is that? I mean, like a car that's chopped into fourths by some sort of a like a fucking dinosaur print on a on a Hyundai. Mm. Something worth looking and stopping to go like, oh, holy shit, you know? Because when right. I, I mean, I'm serious. I get so goddamn mad when there's a giant fucking traffic jam, and then you get up and it's just some cop giving some fucking dipshit a ticket. So what I hear you saying is if somebody's not dead, you're not satisfied. If it with the, bleeds, with the it leads. <laughs> That's why they call it the news, Mike. So do you know who had a franchise of hot dog restaurants in this, I believe in the seventies, none other than Mickey Rooney. Well, well they were called, it was well. called Mickey's weenie world and they served round hot dogs on a hamburger bun. Was what it the fuck? Was it like a conflict with the sixty Minutes crew, and they had to make he had to sell it off or something? That's what he probably yeah. was doing it because he was like, "I don't think hot dogs should be so long. It takes me so long <laughs> to get from the first bite to the last one. Why don't they make them round so I can just shove them in my mouth? It's about time." I wonder if there's a way to bring back the Mickey Rooney hot dog stand. I mean, you can make round hot dogs. Nobody's stopping you. Well, yeah. I mean, clearly, you can go fucking grab a handful of slurry on the side of the road in Pittsburgh. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, they probably, I hope they've moved it since you could. It's Pittsburgh. They did them. not. They did not. Okay. Fair. Fair. You could call them Ringo's, but you'd get sued. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Way to, uh, what is that? Like episode five? <laughs> that's well, that's what a professional newscaster does. Good job, I, Brian. I forecast. And I recap. You want to do my segment first, or you want to do mailbag yeah. first? No, I want to do your segment first. All right. This this segment is called "Getting to Know the Podcast." Sometimes here on the International News Service, we make references that are for people in their mid nineties, <laughs> <laughs> older people, but maybe you're our age and you've just forgotten what we're talking about. Now, what's when what episode did we reference Manimal, Kevin? Uh, I believe in episode seventy seventy. I believe episode seventy we referenced Manimal. Let me for maybe that some of you that don't know what Manimal is. Manimal <laughs> was an American a- 
action adventure television series created by Glenn A. Larson. It ran on NBC from September 30th to December 17th, 1983. The show centers on character Jonathan Chase, played by Simon McCorkendale, as a man that can shapeshift. He can turn himself into any animal he chooses. Uh He only chooses a handful of animals. Uh, The animals he does choose are a horse, a dolphin, a bear, or a bull, although (laughs) those uh, transformations happen off screen, unlike the hawk and the black panther, which he would change into in nearly the episode. Although one episode, one episode, they showed him changing into a snake. Uh, the effects were done by Stan Winston. And now when I said this is created by Glenn A. Larson, you said, I know that name. Or maybe you didn't. But Glenn, Lars- Glenn A. Larson has come up quite a uh-huh. few times. Barside. No, no, that's Gary Larson. Glenn yeah. A. Larson in some way came up just the last episode when we referenced... The Fall Guy. Oh, the Fall Guy is so. Uh, Glenn A. Larson was this um, very prolific television producer. He did uh, Alias Smith and Jones, Battlestar Galactica, Buck Rogers in the Twenty Fifth Century, um, Quincy, Hardy Boys, Ooh. BJ and the Bear, The Fall Guy, Magnum PI, Knight Rider, among others. Now uh, he was coming off real hot off of a. Uh, Knight Rider and a couple other shows, and he's like, "I'm I'm gonna do this show called Manimal." And Manimal was a huge failure, such a big failure <laughs> that we re- it got canceled after like it got canceled after three shows, but they'd already shot seven, so they just like showed the seven. But you know, it starred that dude Simon McCorkendale, who I don't really know what else he did, but also Melody Anderson, who was Ooh. Dale Dale Arden in yeah, that's right. the hit, Flash Gordon. hit film that was one of the first films to make me horny of uh, Flash uh, Gordon. Uh, but so it was but it was a show that was like it was mocked quite a bit because it was, it was about a guy who fights crime who I don't really even know. He was a he was a rich guy who could turn into an animal and he fought crime. He uh, is a bunch of episodes where while at the beach, Jonathan discovers a scrimshaw walrus tusk with shavings in it in the clutches of a skeleton. <laughs> they begin wow. investigating at a local bar where they encounter someone who's been looking for it their whole life. This episode includes a new transformation sequence when Jonathan turns into a snake. Um, also, they used and they they used a whole bunch of shots from this. They used some on the show Auto Man, which will get its own Ooh, behind yeah. the podcast at some point. Uh, here's a that was at least seven episodes, probably only seven episodes. Because for every <laughs> hit that Glenn A. Larson had, there was a miss. And Glenn A. Larson's name is still connected to the new Battlestar Galactica, which but he since passed away, Glenn A. Larson. But he was a very okay. very successful. Now you would assume. That after such a big failure, that the character of Manimal would be just designated to obscurity, never to be seen on TV again. After 1983, he would have been gone. Well, when you assume you make an asshole (laughs) out of you, me, shut the fuck up with your assumptions. You do not assume because you look like a fucking piece of shit. When you assume, because the character of Jonathan Chase, a.k.a. Manimal, portrayed uh-huh. by Simon McCorkendale, <laughs> returned in a crossover episode of the 1990 series Nightman. <laughs> Although this time, the traditional <laughs> special effects were changed to be CGI because it was the 1990s uh-huh. and they needed to do bad CGI effects. So yeah, the I character... Of Manimal lived on, and mm-hmm. there was a, as actually there was talk of a Manimal movie uh, with Will Ferrell and Adam McKay, but it, it never ended up happening. And with that, all I can say is now you know this podcast just a little bit better. <laughs> Go with God, listener. Can I ask you a quick okay. question, Mike? Yes, Mr. McCorkle. Yeah, uh, was he a Blonde-haired, curly-headed man, 
It was blonde, but it was actually uh, you, feathered. You think of the greatest American hero? Well, this is just the era that the one yeah. four to five year era where the blonde haired, curly headed man had his heyday. Never he before had, and never after. He had feathered hair. He he later appeared as an astronomer in the 1979 serial Quartermass. Oh. Quartermass. Quart- Quartermass. There's no, there's no R in there. It's Quartermass. Sure, there is. And <laughs> he, he did a lot of. He did a lot of day day player type work. Uh, he was in all the you know Glenn A. Larson sort of tangential mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, Dynasty, Fantasy Island, Heart to Heart, Matt Houston, Dukes of Hazard, and Ooh. he was in the miniseries Menions of America, which we all remember. Is that a shared universe? Is the Glenn Larson universe? Ooh. Interesting question, Brian. Thanks, Mike. No. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do not believe... Just I mean, man. maybe, possibly, I would love to see a world where the aliens from V meet up with the the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. Ooh. And then they go off to a far-off place and meet Buck Rogers. And Buck Rogers says, can you take me back to Earth? And they say, yeah, can we slap Aaron Gray's buttocks? And they go, and Buck Rogers goes, no. And he shoots them. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. There's, so obviously there's going to be a lot more of these right. uh, where we get into uh-huh. uh, little little references that you, the audience member, might not know as much about that I do and that I just remembered from saying that I wasn't reading off of anything. <laughs> wow. Encyclopedia of... Useful information, Mike. Thank you for that. When you look up information about Manimal, there is uh, one glaring right. omission, and it is the fact that in the pilot episode, they posit that he can turn into a shark. And everywhere, every piece of information you read about now does not mention the shark that he turns into. For the final scene of the pilot episode of Manimal, or as they say it in the UK, Manimal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it got canceled because on uh, Google says ninety three percent like this TV show. Oh. That's that's why you don't trust Google. Probably, probably because it was the same uh, rating machines as the voting machines are used in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> right. Before we go, we got an email from Philip Pampers. Oh, the great Philip Pampers of yeah. of uh, Squeaky From Brent fame. Who drew us the picture? Yes, he he created he created the finest example of fan art I have ever seen for our mm-hmm. podcast or any other podcast. You say podcast? And that, podcast. All right, just want to make sure it's a podcast. It's a podcast. <laughs> hey, hey, it's a transformer listening to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So Philip Pampers said that we haven't heard from the titty man in a while. And <laughs> he asked what advice the titty man would give to Phoenix. Mike? That's a great, well, that's a great question. I think the titty man would just, I think the titty man would just be really concerned that Phoenix might want to burn down a strip club or a Hooters <laughs> or a, a Twin Peaks restaurant. I believe it's called a restaurant. A restaurant. I, I, I do see there being some conflict in that scenario. Then again, I do see that the titty man could possibly team up with Phoenix in order to mm-hmm. create some sort of arson advice that simply burns bras. That would heal very closely to Cagney and Lacey. Can you, <laughs> can you give us, just give us a, a little like clip from that. Hey Phoenix, uh, uh, titty man, titty man got a little bit of a issue with you. Light matches around the yellow rose. Oh, you do, bitch? <laughs> uh, yeah, the titty man uh, does not want you to burn down the yellow rose because the titty man likes to go in there fervently to see titties. <laughs> Ain't that some shit? Let's go drink some Sambuca, bitch. I believe it would go down something like that. That's a tough one. My, I might have to. Was, I might have yeah. to come back to that. I might have to. Okay. 
That is a real crossing of the worlds. The, I would like, I do, I would like to see both the Titty Man and Phoenix show up mm-hmm. in the Glen A. Larson verse. Ooh, like two buddy cops. Ooh, that would be pretty good. Phoenix and the Titty Man. That's a great name for a fucking show. <laughs> Phoenix and the Titty Man. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh shit, a crime. <laughs> titty Man don't like crime unless it's the crime of seeing titties. <laughs> Loose titties, now that's not a crime. So that wraps up another week at the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com. Remember that nothing pacifies a malicious alien civilization like a good dose of INS. Check out the INS merch store at Redbubble and our Patreon. We'll see you next week. Dr. Jonathan Chase, a wealthy, young, handsome, a man with the brightest of futures, a man with the darkest of past, from Africa's deepest recesses to the rarefied peaks of Tibet, heir to his father's legacy and the world's darkest mysteries. Jonathan Chase, master of the secrets that divide man from animal, animal from man, manimal. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.